Jesus, what a friend for sinners, Jesus, lover of my soul. Friends, Welcome to the Unknown Bible, the broadcast ministry of Bible Believers Baptist Church in Corpus Christi, Texas. Join us now for today's Bible study with our pastor, Bevins Welder. In Psalm 37, verse 20, we read that the steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord. But verse 24 says, Though he fall, he shall not be utterly cast down. Now, if his steps are being ordered by the Lord, why would he ever fall? I mean, that doesn't seem to make sense. It seems that any man whose steps are ordered by the Lord would never fall. Uh, he, he, you Just look at it, verse 23. The steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord, and he delighteth in his way. Though he fall, he shall not be utterly cast down, for the Lord upholdeth him with his hand. Well, it would seem that if the Lord is upholding him with his hand and ordering his steps, he would never fall. But we fall. And we fall when our steps are ordered by the Lord for several reasons. Uh, first of all, we fall when our steps are ordered by the Lord because we don't always follow God's orders. You know, there are a number of ways that we end up not following the steps that the Lord orders for us. Uh, for instance, we may ignore Him. I mean, you know how it is when you're really humming. I mean... You, you get up in the morning, you read your Bible, you pray, you have good fellowship with the Lord, you're conscious uh, of the Lord's presence in your life, you're conscious of walking with the Lord, you're filled with the Spirit, and, uh, and, and, the, and the, there are verses in the Bible that speak to you along the way, and you seem to witness to the right people, and you seem to be at the right place at the right time, and things just fall into place. You, you, you've seen those days, or you've heard other people talk about those days, and you know what they are. Uh, but then but then there are days when you ignore the Lord. And some people have been saved and they have ignored the Lord for a long time. You know something? Your steps are ordered by the Lord because you're His child, because He saved you, but you are ignoring the orders. Uh, there may be a period of time that you've really, you know, as I said, been humming for the Lord. and then And then there's another period of time where it seems like, Everything is stressful. You get up in the morning. You're just doing your best to get some breakfast, to, uh, to shave and brush your teeth and comb your hair. And you go out the door and you hit the day hard. And uh, the wheels come off here and uh, a problem with the bills there and a problem with a child here and a problem with the employees or employer there. And just one thing and another. And you're like, what is going on? And what's happened is you've allowed yourself to get into that cycle where you've broken some sweet fellowship with the Lord. And you're not getting the orders. You are ignoring the orders. They're there for you. They're in the Word of God for you. But you're not looking. You're not paying attention. You're not seeing those, uh, those orders that God has for your step because you've ignored Him. Or it could be, could be another reason that you would um, not end up following the steps of the Lord is you've chosen to disobey him. In other words, in other words, you've attended to the preaching. You know what the preacher says. God's given you instruction there. You've read some Bible. You know what the Bible says. And then you find yourself in the throes of a temptation. You find yourself in a situation where there's something that you really want to do and you choose to disobey the Lord. Well, then you know what? You're not, you're not following God's orders. You've chosen to disobey him. And when you choose to disobey the Lord, when you ignore the Lord's orders, uh, you're going to find yourself in a situation where, where you can fall. It, it could very well be that, um, you know, you're getting instruction from the Lord through Bible preaching, Bible teaching, uh, through reading the Word of God, through even reading books about the Word of God, you know, Christian biographies, things like that. Uh, but you're going along, and you're doing well, but then from time to time, you veer periodically from his steps. 
Uh, maybe he, maybe you have something that you want to watch, but you and the Lord have made a deal with each, with each other. You know, you're not going to watch a movie or television. And then some friends say, hey, man, such such is on. You want to, yeah, yeah, okay. So you take this periodic veer from his steps. Or let's say that you're really going along with the Lord and you're in church every Sunday and all that. And then deer season arrives and you're like, oh, man, my friends want to go. So you say, you know what? I'm just going to take the weekend off. And then you skip church that weekend or skip church that morning. And suddenly you find that you have veered from his steps and, and, and it doesn't seem like any big deal. It was just that one day. But the problem is there's something that God had for you that was in that message that was preached on that Sunday that you chose to be away. And later that order that, that uh, God gave you in his steps is something that you need so that you don't fall later on. Whatever the case may be, those are just some examples. When we don't follow the ordered steps of the Lord, we can fall. We don't always fall, but we can fall. We can fall. And the truth of the matter is, we don't always fall right away. In other words, we're going along and we have ignored the, the steps of the Lord. We've disobeyed the steps of the Lord. We've veered periodically from His steps. What, what, one, one thing or another. And you're going along and you're not falling and you're thinking, well, I'm getting away with this. I mean, it's okay. And you become complacent in your ways. And then one day, wham, down you go and you're like, whoa, where did that come from? And you look back across, you know, the path of the previous six months and you're like, you know what? I see where it came from. I see where it came from. And, and here's the remarkable thing. You fell because you didn't follow God's orders. But in spite of yourself, in spite of us, the Lord upholds us. There he is. The Bible says, though he fall, he shall not be utterly cast down, for the Lord upholdeth him with his hand. And you're like, wow, what loving kindness, what mercy of the Lord. Mm -hmm. So one of the reasons that a good man uh, whose steps are ordered by the Lord will fall is that there are times when he doesn't follow God's orders. All right, here's the second reason. We fall even when our steps are ordered by the Lord because we learn best by our mistakes. That's right. In other words, there's something the Lord is trying to teach us, but there's no better way for the Lord to teach us this particular lesson than to allow us to walk right into trouble. I mean, he sees something in our lives. He sees something in our character. He sees something in our relationships that needs to change. And so he lets that fault take us down. That's right. Uh, you look back in your life, and there are a lot of things that you have learned. But the things that you have learned that you have learned best, you learn by making a mistake. And, and the truth of the matter is when we are flat on our back, we resolve at that point, you know what? I am never going to let this happen to me again. And the problem is fixed. From then on, it's never a problem again. It's a cruel way. It seems to have to learn that lesson. I guess it runs very, very close to chastisement and things like that. But I'll tell you what, I have made mistakes in my life. You have made mistakes in your life. And those lessons that we have learned in our mistakes are lessons that are ingrained in us. They are in our memory. They are in our hearts. They are in the very fabric of our being. And you know something? Those mistakes are not going to happen again. And I don't mean to suggest that we're not capable of making those mistakes. I mean to suggest we learned a lesson that we don't want to repeat. And we're like, you know what? That's not going to happen again. And, and, and truly, the Lord allows that to happen to us at a time when the collateral damage is small uh, when the effect to us uh, you know permanently is small so that then later on down the road when the consequences would really be big and the collateral damage would really be big we have we have um, we've changed our ways and following his steps we don't make the mistake then at a time when many more people could be hurt so we fall we fall even when our steps are ordered by the lord because you know, we don't always follow God's orders. And sometimes the lesson we have to learn is a lesson we have to learn because we learn best by our mistakes. The steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord. 
and he delighteth in his way. Though he fall, he fall. Why would he fall? Well, we fall sometimes because we can be a warning to others. You see, when we crash because of a flaw in our lives, others who see us fall take note. Uh, you know, one man said that a, a wise man learns from his own mistakes, but a genius learns from the mistakes of others. You know, there are other people who are watching when we fall. A and people who observe our fall and people we instruct by recounting our falls benefit from our experience. I mean, the Lord can literally lead us into circumstances that result in our fall just so others won't repeat our mistakes. You know, uh, perhaps you're resilient enough to take that fall to be instructive to somebody else. Uh, perhaps uh, it was going to happen to you anyway, but God just kind of surrounds you with some people who need to learn that lesson too. And he knows that, all right, I can let this man over here fall and these 10 will learn better than all 10 of them having to fall to learn the problem. Is it going to work out in their lives? You know, we've, we've, we've seen that kind of thing. You and I have learned from others' mistakes. Um, we've people we've watched, we say, you know what? I saw what happened to that fella and I'm not going to let that thing happen to me. And you benefited by what they went through and thank God they were strong enough to bounce back. Thank God that his love is strong enough to uphold them with his hand. And we're, we're like, well, you know what? I'm sorry he had to go through that, but I'm glad that he did because it sure was a lesson to me not to go there. In the ministry, we have learned so many things by watching the mistakes of other ministers. Like a fellow said one time, he said, you know, I don't know all that I learned, but I, he said, I'll tell you one thing I learned by watching that other fellow. I, I learned what not to do. Okay. So, uh, so we can be instructive. We can be a warning to others. And so the Lord says, you know what? I'm ordering your steps, but I'm going to let you fall here because I've got some other people that need to learn the lesson. Uh, not to go that way. Okay. The steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord. He, and he delighteth in his way. Though he fall. Though he fall. Ugh, you would think that we're not going to. But we do. And we fall even when our steps are ordered by the Lord. Because we have to let go of some things. You see we, we often don't realize. When we are walking with the Lord that we're also hanging on to something else as well. In other words, we say, yeah, we're walking with the Lord. I'm walking with the Lord. But you got something else that you're holding on to. Now, sometimes we hang on to a mentor. You know, in, in, the, in the ministry, for instance, there are some very, very influential men, or there have been. Uh, there are some, among, among independent Baptists, for instance, there are some really, really well-known uh, figureheads or, or the really, really well-known Bible preachers or Bible teachers. Uh, you mention their name and everybody knows who they are. I'm being careful not to mention who their names are. And, and what happens is if you aligned yourself with one of these individuals or if you happen to go to one of their schools and learn from them, you know, it's very easy for you to emulate your mentor. Sometimes people will laugh and say, well, I know where this fellow was trained because I see in him the same characteristics that I saw in the person that he learned from. And so they're marked, so to speak, because they, their, their mannerisms are the same. Um, the things they say are the same. Uh, perhaps their, their understanding of doctrine is the same. Whatever the case may be, you could pretty well say, okay, I know where this guy came from because look at all these characteristics of the person that he was following. You know what? Our God is a jealous God. And rightly so, because he wants us to love him with all of our heart, with all of our mind, with all of our soul. And when you've got this mentor and you're like locked in on this person so heavily that it, it's, it, you, you actually fear this person more than you fear God, or you would never say it, but actually love this person more than you love God. You'd never say that. But it may be so. God knows your heart. And you're hanging on to that mentor. You know the, what the Lord does? Uh, he'll show you a few things in the Bible to show you not to do that. But you're not getting those because the relationship you have with your mentor is so strong. 
So what the Lord does is he lets you fall so that that you'll realize your mentor can't be there to pick you up. As a matter of fact, your mentor may even turn his back on you or her back on you. <laughs> now, the Lord won't because the Bible says, though we fall, he shall not be utterly cast down for the Lord upholdeth him with his hand. And you need to go through that sometimes to find out, ooh, I was hanging on too closely to this person. Sometimes we hang on to a philosophy. Sometimes we hang on to a tradition. Sometimes we even hang on to a deceit. And, and the Lord knows that. You're reading through the Bible and you don't even see that some of the things you're reading in the Bible address this philosophy or direct, uh, address this tradition or address this deceit in your life, but you can't see it. You're blinded to the truth of what's going on. Now, the Lord isn't because he understands your heart and he knows this. We don't need to hang on to any of these things when we're following the Lord. We don't. And so if God sees that we are more reliant upon a man, a philosophy, a tradition, or even a deceit, then we are on him. You know what he's going to do? He's going to let you fall. He's going to let you fall to teach you to let go of these things. A, a, a bad doctrine will get you into trouble. A deceit will get you into trouble. A philosophy or a tradition can get you into trouble. And, and so the Lord says, okay, we're just going to let this thing play itself out. And sure enough, bang, down you go. And you're like, wow, what happened? And you look back and you realize that you weren't hanging on to the word of God. You weren't hanging on to the truth of the words of God. You're hanging on to this thing. And, and, and you're down there on the ground because it let you down. You're like, you know what? I am wiping my hands of this deal. I am done with that. And you go back to the Lord. Get, you get up because he upholds you with his hand and you keep on going. No longer rely it upon that person or that thing, you see. And now you're stronger in your relationship with the Lord because of your fall. So the Lord will let it happen. You're thinking, man, if I'm really following the ordered steps of the Lord, there's no way that I can fall. Yeah, there is. You can ignore his steps or disobey his steps. Uh, you, you may need to learn another lesson that you're not learning any other way but by the fall. So the Lord allows you to make the mistake. It may be that he's got to teach some other people not to go the way you have gone. And so he leads you into something that allows you to fall so the others can take a lesson. Or he may see that you are holding on to something much harder than you think you are and not holding on nearly enough to him. And so, boom, he lets you fall. So you'll let go of those things. All right. Here's another reason we fall even when our steps are ordered by the Lord, because <laughs> we must know. The power of God's hand. You see, we get closer to the Lord when he picks us up from a fall than at any other time in our Christian lives. Falls are hard, to say the least. They hurt. But when we turn to the Lord after a fall, we find out the profound truth of the last part of verse 24. For the Lord upholdeth him with his hand. I mean, really and truly, in your Christian life, you can fall so hard that you believe no one can rescue you. You can fall so hard that you believe that though God can, he won't rescue you. That you got what you were deserving and that the Lord just, you know what, I'll see you in heaven. But I don't want anything else to do with you. And, and I'm going to tell you something. When you find yourself in that situation, you feel a little bit like Job. You feel like if you do have friends, they're not really there helping you. <laughs> you really find yourself in a situation where you don't think you have another friend in the world. And then you look up and there the Lord is not only able to lift you up, but glad to do it. I mean, he sees what's coming. He sees you're going down a path that is going to just uh, lead to a cliff and down you're going to go. And the Lord lets it happen. And you fall. And while you're down there, you're thinking, man, I have messed up. I don't see how in the world my wife or my husband 
would have anything to do with me. I don't know why anybody in my church would have anything to do with me. And, you know, all those thoughts that, that, that go through your mind in a situation like that. And you look up and there's God. <laughs> How you doing? Oh, I'm doing okay, Lord. Well, he says to you, I just want you to know I still love you. And you're like, really? Oh, he said, never quit loving you. And you're like, it can't be true. He said, well, I said I'd never leave you nor forsake you. And you're like, seriously? After a time like this? Yep, even after a time like this. And boy, I mean, you find a, a love uh, of the Lord God right there that changed your life. And he gets you up from that fall and you're like, I can't believe that the Lord would, uh, would uphold me after something as stupid and bonehead as this. But he does. And you know, forever after, your love is never the same. It's closer, deeper, more wonderful. Your appreciation and gratitude for God far superior to anything you've ever experienced in your life. And you're like, how in the world? But it's God. That's God. The goodness of God leadeth thee to repentance. Man, he shows himself good at a time like that, and it just overwhelms you. <laughs> Lord says, I'll let him fall just so he'll know the power of my hand and the resilience of my love. Well, we fall even when our steps are ordered by the Lord because I'll give you one more reason. And this is pretty obvious. We aren't perfect yet. We aren't perfect yet. I mean, try as we may to be perfect. We aren't perfect. I mean, you can do your best to follow the ordered steps of the Lord every day and every minute of the day. But you need to remember you're not the Lord. Until we get our glorified bodies, we are still sinners. That's what Paul said. I know that in me, that is in my flesh, dwelleth no good thing. For the will is present with me. But how to perform that which is good, I find not. He says, when I would do good, evil is present with me. Sin in our lives is going to mess with us from time to time. I mean, you just... Try as you may, you can't get around it. You are not, you are not perfect yet. And neither am I. And we won't be till Jesus comes or until we die and we're there. And even then we have to wait to get our glorified bodies. It's like one preacher used to say, God gave fleas to dogs to remind them they're dogs. And you and I need to be reminded from time to time that we are not perfect. And so here goes the Lord leading us along with these perfectly ordered steps. We're following along and then boom, we fall. And you're like, how in the world did that happen? You're a sinner. I'm a sinner. You say, yeah, but I don't like sin. Well, I understand that. Neither do I. And you get back up and there you go again. And then boom, down you go. And you're like, what just happened? You know, sin's still working in our lives. We're not to yield to it, of course, but there it is. And if from time to time, it crops its ugly head up, and then pff, there we are, in trouble again. Let me tell you something. Your steps, if you're saved, if you're saved, your steps are ordered by the Lord. They are the steps of a good man. And you're not good by reason of your own goodness. You're good by the reason of the goodness of God that's in you because of Jesus Christ. The steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord. Your steps are ordered by the Lord. I believe that. In other words, I believe God has a will for our lives that's, that's the same basically for each of us. It's published in the Word of God. You see what the will of God is. But I also believe He has a plan for us. He has a daily walk for us. And your steps are ordered by the Lord. Now listen, listen. You need to look carefully for God's direction in every step you take. You do. You need to walk circumspectly, redeeming the time. That's what Paul said. You look down there. He says, thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. I mean, the Lord wants to make sure that every step in your life lands in the right spot. So don't ignore him. Read the Bible. Get the orders for the day and follow his steps. Don't disobey him. When you see what the orders are and you've got something up in your own heart that wants to go another direction, don't follow that direction. Don't veer from his path. But, 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 but while, you, while you're remembering, okay, that God has every step ordered, 
and you're not to ignore him, disobey him, or veer from his path. Remember, falls are part of your walk with the Lord. You got to remember that. Falls are part of your walk with the Lord. You've got to remember that. Otherwise, you will chasten yourself so hard when you fall and condemn yourself so hard when you fall that you, you, you're going to mess yourself up. If falls are part of your walk with the Lord, be ready. Just be ready. And then when you fall, look to the Lord's hand to help you back up. He says, the steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord. Do you believe that? I do. And he delighteth in his way. When you have been following the ordered steps of the Lord, you know what? You do delight in the way of the Lord. You look at that and go, man, this is the happiest I've ever been. Trusting God is the greatest thing that can ever be. I don't want my life to be anything other than what it is today because I am so happy following the ordered steps of the Lord. Amen. You delight in his way. And then he says, though he fall, <laughs> he shall not be utterly cast down for the Lord upholdeth him with his hand. All right, then, when you fall, look to the Lord's hand to help you back up. Why? Because Solomon said in Proverbs 24, 16, a just man falleth seven times and riseth up again. So just get up. Get up. Well, let's review one more time just to summarize the message. Why, when a man's steps are ordered by the Lord, will he fall? He'll fall because we don't always follow God's orders. Uh, we fall because we learn best by our mistakes, and sometimes a fall is a way to get uh, a lesson permanently implanted in our minds and hearts. We fall because we can be a warning to others. If one of us falls and seven others learn, it's better than all eight of us falling. We fall because we have to let go of some things that we don't even know we're dependent upon. We fall because we must know the power of God's hand who upholds us, and we fall just to remind us that we aren't perfect yet. The Lord is still the Lord. <laughs> We're just his children. I pray that God blesses you with the truth of this message and that it helps you out. In Jesus' name, amen. You have been listening to The Unknown Bible, the radio ministry of Bible Believers Baptist Church in Corpus Christi, Texas. For information about our church, go to our church website at www.my3bc.com. That's my, the number three, bc.com. If you would like to contact us by telephone, our number is 361-241-6100. Bible Believers Baptist Church is a Bible-believing church located at 1701 Rand Morgan Road. If you are not currently a member of a Bible-believing church and you are looking for a church with an uncompromising stand on the words of God, come visit with us this Sunday or Wednesday. We would love to see you. Amen.